Welcome everyone to rockbandreviews.com and today we're talking with legendary drummer and founder of the hit machine known as Ambrosia. Now Ambrosia was born in 1970 and is best known for the chart topping hits Biggest Part of Me, How Much I Feel, You're the Only Woman and Holding On to Yesterday. Ambrosia will be playing three live shows here in South Florida. The first two will be on July 2nd at Gulfstream Park, Hallandale Beach, with the first show at 6.30 p.m. and the second at 9.30 p.m. The third performance will be at the Funky Biscuit in Boca Raton on July 3rd at 8 p.m. It's so great to talk to you again, buddy. Oh, hey, Bill. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to, to uh, be with you. Yeah, I think this is probably, within the last six years, probably our 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 fifth interview and it's just always great there's always new information uh coming out and such and probably going to ask you the question that is probably the most asked of so many bands right now and and that is what have you been doing to keep busy uh during the pandemic oh yeah well i was lucky in a sense because uh uh my wife and i we ended up with uh, both our son and daughter and our two grandkids and daughter-in-law all here under the the same house so um being that my son and daughter are excellent musicians in their own right we formed a family band and we did a lot of uh, we did some live streaming the tin drum family band and we're almost finished with an album and uh so it's been very productive and uh although you know uh eight people living in the same house can get a bit uh <laughs> claustrophobic <laughs> it it worked out pretty good you know so, and, and i mean as a performer like yourself and other musicians uh that are usually on the road performing throughout a good portion of the year because i mean you guys tour a lot and the pandemic in, in a way may have been a blessing in disguise allowing you that precious time to spend with your family oh yeah absolutely it wouldn't have happened uh w you know w without the pandemic happening it would not have happened so uh, you know, although we did, we canceled a lot. I think we canceled some like something like 80 shows mm -hmm. last year. But uh, in the big picture, I got to say it worked out well for us. Uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I hate. To, I mean, obviously, it was a horrible thing for the country and for you know so many people that didn't make it. But you know, uh, I'm I'm one of the lucky ones. So you know. And I, and I think uh, for, for what I do and you do and even for the fans that come out and see the live performances, I think maybe at some point we might have taken this privilege for granted, you know? I mean, all of a sudden it's taken away from us and we realize, wow, this is one of the great freedoms that we have to be able to go out and see a live show. And now they're telling us we can't do that and who knows if it's ever going to come back, but... Thankfully, everything's looking great right now. And we're we're getting back into the swing of things. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I I know for one, you know, I mean, before it happened, uh, I well, I think about a month into it, I actually realized uh, how burned out I was mm. um, from all the traveling and uh, and the, you know the constant uh, the constant travel and so um, it was actually. A, a chance to catch, catch my breath uh and now i'm at the point where i'm looking forward to it you know i mean as hard as travel is i'm not going to complain about getting on an airplane again <laughs> i agree you know? i agree now <laughs> now i went you know deep back into your bio to learn that you were an army brat and had already traveled a lot of the world at such an un, uh, uh, you know a young age, and to me it almost seems that fate was setting you up for the touring life back then. <laughs> you could be right. Uh, <laughs> you could be right. You know, it was a um, in in a way uh, conditioning. I mean, I was I am an army brat, and you know, every two years we moved, and you had to reacclimate, you know, yourself to a new situation and new people and new kids and all that but in a way i think that was a uh, good training to, for being a musician especially what i do is, is a lot of session work and, and doing projects with people so you're playing with a lot of different people all the time and it's kind of i think growing up that way actually opens your your eyes to be able to be more accepting and to be uh able to to roll with other people uh easier 
you know, because you're not, you, you can't get set in your ways because your way tomorrow is going to be different, you know. Yeah, it kind of turns you into a, a chameleon where you can adapt to just about anything. Yeah, there you go. Now, now it also seems that you might have been destined to be a drummer, you know, as your last name is Drummond, too. So there's, there's a lot of things going on here. <laughs> yeah. Now, what was it about percussion that, that drew you to it? I know you were in India as a young boy, and you seen them uh, banging out some tin or something like that, and that kind of... No, well, actually, it was Turkey. Oh, I, Turkey, I spent, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, I spent like three and a half years in Turkey, and uh, I was pretty young. I was seven, eight you know that, that period and uh i got separated from my mom one time at a bazaar and uh, i ended up in the back of a tent you know with these uh craftsmen spinning the huge copper plates and hammering them and uh the synchronicity that they had just kind of you know was like a wave crashing on me and uh i i've i've been working out that memory ever since i think i've been uh uh, obsessed with you know the kinetic motion of uh, applied to drumming, applied to sound, and uh, yeah, I've been obsessed with it ever since. Now we had you had mentioned earlier uh, tin drum. Now for those that are not familiar with tin drum music, tell us about the idea behind it and how it has become a family affair. Well, it's funny. It started. Um, when my wife and I got married, um, my wife is Mary Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, she was touring with Jimmy Buffett and people like that, uh, and Animal Logic, and did a lot of recording for uh, Pink Floyd and stuff. But um, uh, so we got to the point where I was touring with J Ambrosia had uh, taken a break, so I was touring with people like um, Jim Messina and uh, just so we we were. We were passing each other in airports, and we had a young son at the time, and we were uh, we were basically handing them off to each other at, in the airport. And it was like it got to the point where we finally said the only way that we're going to be able to, to be together is to is to work together. Mm -hmm. So we started this band, Tin Drum, and we did um, three albums, and we had great critical success. Um, you know, uh, you know, we were like independent album, you know, in the top 10 albums of the year and so forth. So uh, that was fun. And then that eventually has led to uh, slowly including our kids as they became of age. And and then, of course, now we have a 10 drum family band. And I think we are going to do a, a stream again on uh, the 17th, I think, of uh, of this month. We'll do another live stream. And didn't we uh, just have back in uh, May a few weeks ago a release from uh, Tin Drum? Yes, we uh, we have released some songs. Um, there's a song called Hold On that came out. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, who's uh, going the fastest of the four of us right now, has three songs released under the name Sierra Drummond. And uh, so, But we do have this family album coming out, which I'm really excited about. Good. We'll keep uh, we'll keep tabs on that, and once that comes out, uh, we'll talk to you or possibly your children about that. <laughs> well, it'd be more interesting to talk to my kids, probably. But yeah. <laughs> now, any new or original material uh, coming from Ambrosia? We have some original songs. We've yet to to lay them down because uh, uh, that you know, of course, the pandemic didn't help that. Um, and we have some old songs that we've discovered in the vaults that were that we think are really great and we may be putting a uh, a compilation record together of, of a lot of old stuff that was never released that should have been released but uh you know we uh we didn't get to it at the time you know yeah yeah well that would be fantastic a little bit of the old some of the new i think it would be a great compilation and certainly something ambrosia fans would definitely be looking forward to yeah I think so. Burley, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to talk with rockbandreviews.com, and I look forward to seeing you on the road. Uh, probably be at both shows, so uh, we'll come and say hi. Uh, I hope so, and I look forward to seeing you, Bill. All right, wonderful. Thanks. Talk to you later, boss. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye.